Here to tell us all the details about that is Michael Morley, a builder who uses SIPs. Hi, Michael. Hi, Steve. Uh, so what's the first step? Well, the first, the main step is to have a properly prepared set of panel drawings or shop drawings that uh, has all the information needed to put the building up correctly following manufacturer's recommendations. And uh, that, that is taken care of at the factory, ready to go when the, the panels get to the job site. What's the first step when they arrive on site? First step is to inventory the panels, make sure that everything that was ordered is there, the number of panels, and at that point you start unloading them. Usually it takes some mechanical help, forklift is necessary, these are big pieces, so get them off the trucks, spread around the job site, and ready to start putting them up. How do you fasten SIPs to the floor system? Well, the most typical situation is on a plywood subfloor, and there it's a little different than typical framing. First thing we do is we want to inset that first plate a half an inch so that the panel skin lines up with the rest of the framing. So we apply a bead of adhesive, put the plate down, inset a half an inch, the panel goes over it. After the plate is nailed down and the panels are attached through nailing horizontally through the skin into that side of that plate and everything's lined up and nailed off. How do you fasten sips to concrete slabs? It's a little different situation there. We have to separate the moisture from the framing, so we use two plates. The first one is a treated lumber ripped to the width of the overall panel. There's a bead of adhesive put down. That plate goes down over the bolts. Then the first plate is put down over the bolts, which are extended up through the concrete a little bit, bolted down. Then the panel is flipped over that top plate and nailed off mm -hmm. in your typical nailing schedule that's called for on the plans. What kind of fasteners do you use? In that situation, through the skin into the wood, we use a minimum six penny nail. More typically on a job site, it's an eight penny nail collated, so they're nailed off in the approved uh, schedule of nailing. If, uh, if it's a job without special requirements, six inches on center should be adequate, but that again is on part of the panel drawings to tell you exactly how often to put the nails, what kind of nails to use, and it goes back to that roadmap approach. What about adhesives? Adhesives are a big part of the system, and in a wood to panel connection, there's an adhesive bead on the inside and the outside of the plate, along the top of the plate, and it serves uh, as much for air sealing details as it does for a structural connection. How do you recommend splicing panels together? Well, butt joint and a wall is handled in a number of different situations. The basic connection is what we call a thin spline connection, where there's a, a strip of OSB behind the skin on each side of the panel, and in that situation, uh, a half-inch crown staple is a better choice for a connector rather than a nail. It'll, it'll hold better. Sometimes, if there's a point load above, there'll be two-by embedded inside the panel to pick up those point loads, whatever the panel drawings say is necessary at that connection. Uh, a lumber spline, a single spline can be used in certain situations, but the typical one is that double spline. What's the procedures for window and door openings? Well, the bucks can either be pre-installed in the factory or they can be put in in the field in the same method we talked about, a bead of adhesive on both sides of the panel. The two by gets slipped in there and nailed off in, uh, it's not as critical a structural connection, but follow that six inch pattern will we'll give you a good connection all the way through. How are the top plates integrated with the SIPs? They're used to connect each individual wall panel. So they always overlap the panel by a minimum of one foot. So you use as long a plate as you can on that situation. They tend to straighten out the wall and give you a good solid connection through all the panels of a wall. And then they're nailed off horizontally with a bead of adhesive on the uh, inside of both skins before that plate goes in there. Do you recommend any special lumber? No, a regular lumber as long as it's straight, not twisted. We don't want to use green lumber and the straightest pieces the better. SIP panels are inherently tighter than normal types of construction, but how do you recommend sealing the panels together to stop airflow? Well, in addition to the adhesives we've talked about, the foam-to-foam uh, -foam connection comes with a chase in the middle of it. We drill a series of holes halfway through the panel to allow for uh, two-part expanding foam to be injected into those holes, and that ensures an airtight seal throughout the building and all panel connections. What about job site cuts or modifying panels on the site? Well, installers have to have the capabilities to modify the panels on site. Those involve a chainsaw type of attachment for a skill saw and a method to relieve the foam out of the inside of the panel. Anything more than that, the, uh, the cuts have to be referred back to the manufacturers to see if they're going to damage the panels or in, intrude on the integrity of the panels in any way. So it's something to be careful about, but it can be done. I understand you use house wraps as well. Any cladding system out there is going to allow water in. So it's very important to keep 
the panels dry. We use a non-perforated house wrap in conjunction with extra careful details on windows and doors to ensure that any water that gets through the cladding is able to drain back out through the system and keep the panels dry. Michael, helpful information. Thanks, Steve. If you'd like to learn more information about how to install SIPs correctly, check out the National Evaluation Report available from the National Evaluation Service and check out the InstallSpan's installation guidelines on the InstallSpan website.